The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And welcome to The Factor Uncensored. Holiday parades have been added to the growing list of sites for gun violence. Sadly, seven people were shot and killed at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois. Police are saying the accused gunman has been planning the attack for weeks and fired more than 70 rounds at the crowd from a roof of a building. That mass shooting is just one of the many that happened this year alone. It's one of the reasons why the owner of an animal shelter in California is addressing the gun control issue. Last month, Kim Seal decided to enforce an anti-gun policy for customers, meaning if you were against gun control, she would not let you adopt an animal. And if you did and you believe in guns, you should bring that animal back to her. Now, the backlash has been swift and brutal once her story made national headlines, with many people leaving horrible voicemails. And we warn you, it's pretty ugly, like this one for Seal. Hey, Kim. Very soon, someone's going to go visit you, and we're going to rape you, and then we're going to kill you, and we might even kill a bunch of your dumb f animals. Well, after Uvalde, I just could not stand to see what was happening anymore. We had it happen in Thousand Oaks and people wanted to just not talk about it, put it under the rug like it wasn't happening. And I just couldn't have that happen anymore. And of course, we just had the, the shooting at the parade yesterday in Illinois. Uh, so have anyone brought their animals back as a result of this policy that you have? Well, you know, unfortunately, in my world, it's not people bringing them back for those reasons. People bring them back for all kinds of reasons, which is why we have questions and policies to begin with. You know, when we get involved with someone to adopt with them, we're a partner for life, Isaiah, mm -hmm. and we want to Oh, what kind of home this dog is going to? What kind of home this cat is going to? How, how high is the fence? What kind of food are you going to feed them? And if I've got to get a call from them in the middle of the night, I want to feel comfortable about going to their home. And if they don't think the same way that I think, which is, I think we need gun reform in America. I'm not trying to take anybody's guns away from them. I believe in responsible gun ownership. But what I don't believe is that if we don't talk about it, we're not gonna get anywhere. Obviously, our government hasn't been able to solve this problem. The country seems to be divided. I am not a political person at all, but I do have an opinion. But Kim, what and do you say to those who say, you're forcing your politics and way of life on me as a pet owner, and it should have nothing to do with owning a pet? I think they need to, to get a life and go to a regular animal shelter. A regular animal shelter is killing 5 million animals a year in America. They can go to any one of those and not have any questions be asked, okay? They can get one for free sometimes, and most of the time it's no more than $100. If you come to me, I am a private nonprofit rescue that goes to those same shelters. I pay the fees, and then I pay for the vetting, and then I work as a volunteer. I am not paid to go and help these animals find the best home they can possibly. I mean, that's what I do. Now, I know it's been spun a bunch of different ways in the media, but the way that it really is in America is that any one of these people that think that I'm taking their right away, they are wrong. They can go to any government shelter and get an animal and no questions would be asked. I'm a small rescue in Thousand Oaks, California, mind you. Borderline happened a few blocks away from me. And I have every right to an opinion that I don't want to see this. I don't want to wake up to this anymore. I don't want to live in a world where I have to carry a gun to go to a movie theater. Do I have to carry a gun to go to the grocery store? And do I have to carry a gun to go to my animal shelter to rescue animals? I'm sorry, I'm not going to live this way anymore. I'm going to say what I feel and I'm going to ask people how they feel. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We have to move forward, not backward. And we know those who are for guns are very vocal out there. Have you had any pushback, any emails, any people writing or calling? What has that response been from those who are against your policy? I have lost a lot. I have lost a lot of friends that I thought were friends, and maybe they're not friends if they feel this way about my opinion. 
Um, my opinion should mean something. It shouldn't matter that I am an animal rescuer and I have this opinion. I have a right to my opinion, just like they have a right to theirs. But what I want the world to understand is that opening up a conversation shouldn't start a war. A war was let loose on me after a man named Tucker Carlson put me on his show without my consent and dissected my newsletter and said that I was trying to take people's guns away from them. He more or less lied and he had no right to do that. I have a small local newsletter that I've been sending out for t almost 12 years. Mm -hmm. It goes to 4,000 people. It didn't, I don't know how it ended up in his hands, but he dissected it and, and spun it his way to incite violence. He said that I was trying to confiscate people's guns. I don't want to take anybody's guns. How could I take anybody's gun? I don't even have a gun. I mean, how am I going to get their gun? And so have you faced threats, uh, threats to you, your person, to family members? What, what have you seen as a result of this? Um, I had to have the police in Ventura County come to my shop and install video, live feed to their offices because we were getting thousands of threats a day. Oh hundreds and hundreds of emails an hour that were, um, they were so violent that it did, um, I mean, seriously, I, I talked to a security detail about maybe hiring them and I decided it was probably best to just lock the doors on the shop for a few days and see if it, it, it you know, settled down. I had to meet with two different professional lawyers that handle these kind of things and they both um, gave me some, some advice about to, you know, to quit talking to media, which, you know, media was just showing up at my shop and insisting and banging on the door, wanting an interview and, you know, riling up the dogs because when you bang on a door of a shelter, the dogs start going crazy. Um, it was the worst two weeks of my life, other than the two weeks after my sister was killed by her husband with a gun. So I'm sure as a result, it, it took a mental toll on you, dealing with that kind of hate and vitriol from all across the country. Well, you know what? The hate was one thing. I, I, I'm forgiving of that because I, I do believe in God. And I believe that the people that were, were putting all that hate at me, they need some healing. They need some love themselves. And for whatever reason, they feel the way they feel. I'd like for them to know that I respect the fact that they feel that way. And they've, they've come to that decision through their life circumstances. And for whatever reason, you know, they, they hated me for my feelings. I forgive them. But I'm going to continue to feel the way that I feel and not hide the way that I feel, because I think the conversation in America should be open. All of us should be talking about it, whether it's with the grocery store clerk or the movie theater person or the, the Uber guy that drops off your food. Why aren't we talking about it? It affects all of us. If we can't go to a 4th of July parade, and be safe and not worry about a sniper on the roof, a, a 21 year old man on the roof that bought that gu gun legally. I mean, we need to be asking questions to the person who sold that gun to that person and say, couldn't you tell maybe there was something off with this person? I mean, don't give him a gun just because it's legal. Ask him some questions, talk to him, offer him a, a Coca-Cola or a tea, you know, something. You know, that's what I do when people come into my shelter. I sit them down. I get them what they need to drink. I talk to them. I show them other dogs. If they've, if they've chosen the wrong dog, I say, let's, let's talk about this dog because your lifestyle maybe isn't right with that dog. You know, I want to get to know them. Why can't mm -hmm. we get to know them? You know, we're all in this together. I can't imagine that anybody in America wants to see this happen again. None of us want to see this happen again.